What's up YouTube? It's Zach. It's been a while since I've released a video, but I wanted to go ahead and release this demonstration video on what I did to modify a Razer Ground Force go-kart. If you don't care about what I did to make this mod, go ahead and fast forward to the time at the bottom of your screen right now to see a demonstration video of riders uh, on this thing and you're able to see what it's able to do. For the rest of you, uh, I'm going to go ahead and do my best to show you um, pretty in-depth uh, detail as best I can um, without the actual video footage of how I built this um, because this was built several years prior to the Baja Doodlebug project uh, which many of you have seen and I enjoy uh, the comments uh, and reviews on that. So basically what I did was I take the Razer Ground Force go-kart as seen on your screen and this comes with a 24 volt setup uh, and in order to make room for 48 volts uh, and a bigger motor I had to gut the entire rear end so basically as I took off what was already there I had to extend the back end to support four 12 volt batteries that you can see are running in series um, so I, my dad and I ran down to Home Depot we grabbed some angle iron and some different uh, iron supports uh, and using diff pretty much whatever we could find from bolts to some welding, uh, we modified a rear end that could hold four 12 volt batteries. Uh, and you got to uh, do a pretty good job of stabilizing the rear end because those batteries are very heavy and with vibration from driving it, it will bend um, some, some cheap angle iron uh, in a hurry. So basically we have the 48 volt setup. Uh, and I replaced the stock 24 volt motor with a 1000 watt motor. So originally I used a 36 volt 1000 watt motor. I had read that if you push more volts to a motor, you're going to get more RPMs, which is true. So pushing 48 volts to a 36 volt motor, we were able to increase our RPM substantially. But in doing so, you're going to lose some low-end torque, which is not a big deal when you're using the stock rubber tires that come with the Razor Ground Force, as you can see on the front of the go-kart. But we started breaking axles, because as you'll see on the screen right now, the Razor Ground Force comes with an axle that only has one drive wheel on the right, and the left is actually a smaller shaft that is used for a bearing setup within the wheel on the left side so that it just spins and doesn't cause any sort of traction issues um, with two wheels spinning at once. But since we broke two axles with heavier riders, because I'm 250, most of the riders are 200 plus pounds, and we've had riders over 300 pounds riding this, uh, we wanted to go ahead and reinforce that rear end. So we swapped out the Ground Force axle with parts from a Razor Ground Force Drifter go-kart. As you can see on your screen right now, the drifters are designed to drift. They have rear tires that are bigger in diameter. They're a hard plastic uh, that spins very easily on both asphalt uh, and concrete. Um, and the sh axle shaft is solid all the way through and you actually have a posi-traction two-wheel drive system. So we eliminate the smaller axle that we had on the ground force uh, and we add substantial um, diameter to the entire axle. So that's what we did. But in order to do that, you can't put the ground force front tires, which were front and back on the ground force, on the back uh, on the new axle from the drifter. Uh, they don't have room for the bearing setup and so it doesn't work. So we just simply upgraded the tires, which is more fun anyway, because it gives us the drifting, which we hadn't thought of doing before that. So the drifting that you get uh, with the bigger tires uh, and the better axle and heavier riders causes more um, amp draw from the motor to get moving. Uh, and once that starts happening, it's pulling uh, more voltage and amps through the controller and we were literally popping solder connections on the controllers. So we went through two different controllers until we figured out what was happening and then we just started disassembling the controllers and finding the uh, connections and just re-soldering them 
but it became a routine we got tired of dealing with. Um, so once we figured out what was happening, uh, we just simply upgraded the motor from a 36 volt 1000 watt motor to a 48 volt 1000 watt motor, which is what it's designed for. You get a lot more low end torque to get going. So the drifting, the spinning is a ton of fun, regardless of how heavy the, the rider is, but you lose three to five, two to five miles per hour on your top end speed. But given uh, the places we have to ride, the people that we have riding this, and just the overall fun factor of drifting and spinning and, uh, and what we're doing, uh, the donuts, uh, we decided this was a lot more fun anyway than the few miles an hour that we rarely got to do anyway. So again, we currently have the 48 volt, 1000 watt motor, which is what I'd recommend if you're going to have heavier riders. You need the rear axle from the Razor Ground Force Drifter Go-Kart. So I would recommend starting with the Razor Ground Force Drifter Go-Kart. Don't do what we did in starting with the uh, Ground Force unless you have it, but you may run into the same issue of heavy riders dealing with broken axles. And you cannot buy that replacement axle anymore from them, which is why we ended up going, uh, founding, finding some spare parts um, on a couple of uh, Ground Force Drifters that a gentleman was selling. And we have it now for some spare parts for bearings, for extra wheels and that type of stuff. Uh, we go ahead and we modified the seat belt. As you can see, it's a regular car seat belt. You're going to want it. Uh, as you'll see from the footage, um, this thing is <laughs> sort of out of control and it will throw you right out of it if you're not buckled in. Uh, the original Ground Force comes with some nylon strapping that's a joke. I'm not sure it would hold anybody in anything. Um, so get rid of that. Buy a real seat belt that's mounted in, uh, buckle in, and it's uh, a lot of fun, as you'll see from the footage. So we were able to use the original throttle that came with the go-kart. Um, the newer ones, I believe, have a six-wire connection. The thumb throttle connection is six wires. The controller that I buy is a three-wire connection. Um, a, a, a search on Google will tell you which wires you need to use. Um, we no longer have the lights that tells you your battery indicator on the throttle because we're using three of the six wires, but it works uh, just the same and you know you can tell when the battery starts to get tired because you slow down so common sense kind of kind of tells you that um, other than that I'm gonna go ahead and list the parts that we used uh, in the description below the motor the controller the batteries um, uh, the sprocket on the motor you need to replace the sprocket that comes on the motor because it's for a different chain size and again that information I will put in there for you other than that, you got to run down to Home Depot or your local hardware store, um, buy some, some angle iron and some, some metal reinforcements, uh, and have some fun on a Saturday afternoon uh, rebuilding the back end. Um, I did not, as you'll see, um, end up connecting the brake control to the controller. There are several connections on the controller that you do not need. The ones that you do need are the throttle. Uh, the, it's, it's labeled lock, but it's basically your power switch. You do want to have a power switch because the throttle always uses a base voltage of 2 volts um, when the power is on. And so even if you don't have, uh, you're not physically driving it, it's, it's wasting power if you don't have a power switch. So you want a lock switch. Um, the throttle, you need to hook up the batteries and you need to hook up the, uh, the motor. So there's four connections, there's several that you don't need, pilot lamp, a few miscellaneous things that you don't need to use. Um, other than that, I think uh, we're pretty much set. Um, go ahead and just take a look at the uh, fi finished product. Um, if you want to try something like that, I highly recommend it. I would love to see some, some video and some feedback from you guys that have tried it, and hopefully you have as good a luck as we did. And uh, if you start with the 48 volt motor, um, if you start <laughs> with the Ground Force Drifter, uh, hopefully you won't have the controller um, working too hard issue and you won't have a busted axle issue uh, that I have. Other than that, I, uh, I appreciate any, any positive feedback you guys have. Hopefully you enjoy this. I think the demonstration video speaks for itself on what this can do and why we do it. And uh, I appreciate the feedback. All right, guys, we'll talk to you later. Bye-bye. Over